There are actually two different kinds of regression discontinuity designs. The ones we've talked about so far are called sharp RDDs, because if you're on one side of the cutoff, you always get treated, and if you're on the other side of the cutoff, you never get treated. So be, the, which side of the cutoff you're on completely determines your treatment. The other kind is called a fuzzy RDD, and that's when on one side of the cutoff, you're very likely to get treated, but you might not, and on the other side of the cutoff, you're very likely not to get treated, but you might actually get treated. So which side of the cutoff you're on does not completely determine whether you get treated or not. Now, there's actually a really nice analogy between regular RDD, or uh, sharp RDD, and regression, and fuzzy RDD and instrumental variables analysis. So basically, with sharp RDD, we saw that all we had to do was compare average outcomes of people on the treated side of the cutoff with average outcomes of people on the untreated side of the cutoff, just like in a randomized experiment. So that's also what you would learn in just doing a regression analysis of the correlation between which side of the cutoff you are. So with fuzzy RDD, however, you can't just compare the average outcomes of people on one side of the cutoff with the average outcomes on the other, because on the treated side of the cutoff, you've actually got some people who didn't get treated. And on the other side of the cutoff, the, where you're not likely to get treated, some people actually do. Okay, so there's, there's a problem. Your, your groups are sort of mixed up. So you can't just do that average comparison. Now, that's actually exactly the case that happened in the non-compliance situation. There, we assigned people to be treated, but some of them didn't comply. They actually didn't get treated. And conversely, we could assign some people not to get treated, and they may actually get treated. So we have a non-compliance problem. Well, how did we solve the non-compliance problem? One way was by using instrumental variables, and that's exactly how we can solve the fuzzy RDD problem. We can use which side of the cutoff you're on as an instrument for whether you get treated or not. So that's because if you're on one side of the cutoff, that makes you a lot more likely to get treated, although it doesn't completely determine whether you're treated or not. So that's how we'll ultimately use um, instrumental variables analysis to analyze fuzzy RDD situations. So let's just look at an example of this. So in this example, we're going to go all the way back to 1520 in Switzerland. One region in Switzerland broke out into war. And after the war in 1520, one region became Protestant and was ruled by Protestant leaders, and the other region remained Catholic. So there was this split in religion. One, re one side of the, of the region was Protestant, and the others were Catholic. So the researchers today can have used this split to do an RDD analysis of the effect of religion on your things like preferences for leisure or government redistribution. So let's look at how that works. Here in this chart, I've got the share of Protestants living in a region in 1980. Okay, So I'm going to measure that share between 1 and 0. And my units of analysis are going to be municipalities, towns or villages in Switzerland. Here at 0, I'm drawing the border. Okay, This is People, if you're a town here at zero, you're living on that, on that 1520 border where the region was split into two halves, the Protestant side and the Catholic side. So then on the horizontal axis, I have distance to the border. Over here, it's got a town right here is minus 20 kilometers from the border. And over here, we've got 20 uh, kilometers from the border in the other direction. Okay? So... Um, so what we see here is that on this side of the border, very few people are Protestant. Only somewhere around 10% you know, maybe of people are Protestant. Over here, however, on this side of the border, it jumps dramatically. Just going a few kilometers across the border, the percentage of Protestants in towns and villages jumps all the way up to something like you know, about 80%. Okay, it doesn't go up to 1, so that's why we know we have a fuzzy RDD design, because this is not 1, and this right here is not 0. That's what you would see if you had a sharp RDD. It'd be 0, and then right as soon as you cross the border, it's 1. Okay, here it's not quite that, but it's pretty close. So that says that the border really does matter 
for the share of Protestants living in these villages today. Remember, this is the 1520 border, and our data here is from 1980. Okay, so that is the, what we call the first stage in an instrumental variables analysis. Which side of the border you're on affects your treatment, affects the percentage of Protestants living in that village. Okay, so now let's think about our outcome variables. Well, Switzerland is nice because they have a form of direct democracy where their uh, citizens vote directly on many different referenda. So what the authors did is they took the data on all the referenda that the Swiss voted on from the year 1980 onwards. That was about um, 44 different referenda. And they categorized that into three groups. The first group is referenda about leisure. So this is things like, should the official retirement age be lowered or not? Uh, the second group was um, uh, government redistribution. So should the old, uh, old age and disability insurance be expanded? So if you say, if a village votes yes mostly, then we say that you have a preference for redistribution from young workers to old age uh, retired people or people with disabilities. The third group is about your preferences for government intervention. So things like, do you think the government should be regulating prices or not? So we've got data on each municipality and how they voted on these referenda. And then we can just compare how these municipalities voted for the ones who are on this side of the border and the, with the ones who are on that side of the border. So let's do that. So here I've got their group of referenda, preferences for leisure. So they've taken all the referenda that are like um, should the reti official retirement age be lowered or not? Okay, so over here on the Catholic side, we see that if the town is really close to the border, it about 48% of the time votes for these um, leisure-based referenda. And then over here on the Protestant side, however, it drops all the way down to 39%. So we see that there's about a 9% difference in their preferences for leisure just by where you are, which side of the border you're on. And remember, the whole idea of RDD is that because the border basically determines your treatment, whether you're Protestant or Catholic, this difference here is solely explained by the fact that these municipalities are pro Protestant and these are Catholic. So this is a causal effect. Okay? Now we have to be careful because this is a fuzzy RDD. So this difference is actually something like an intention to treat number. It's because these municipalities, they have a few Catholics living in them. And these municipalities, they have a few Protestants living in them. So if you think that actually being Protestant does have a true causal effect on lowering your preference for leisure, as, we, as is suggested here, then actually the true causal effect's going to be even bigger. Okay, because if we got rid of the non-compliers, the Catholics over here, and we got rid of the Protestants who are non-compliers over here, then we'd see the gap increase. And we'll see that happen a little bit later. But right now, we're just looking at this, uh, this effect, the intention to treat effect. So that's the outcome for leisure. Let's look at the next outcome. Over here, we have preferences for redistribution. And we see an effect that's not quite as large. You see for, on the Catholic side, it's about 43%. And then on the Protestant side, it's about 39%. So something about 4% uh, before we found 9%. So that's still pretty big. Um, but, you know, maybe it's a little bit of a, uh, an effect, about 4%. Um, being on the Protestant side lowers your preferences for redistribution. Okay, so you're not as, not as inclined to, to redistribute to the old age or the disabled. Let's look at our third and final outcome variable. Preferences for intervention, for government intervention, things like regulation of prices. So over here, again, we see that Protestants have lower preferences for, for intervention than the Catholics do. It's by about 53% to about 48%. So that's about a 5% difference in outcomes for the preference for intervention. So that's our first main result from this paper. We see that the causal effect, the intention to treat effect of being Protestant versus Catholic lowers your preferences for government intervention, lowers your preferences for redistribution, and lowers your preferences for leisure. 
On the next module, we'll see those exact same numbers in table form and do the instrumental variables analysis to solve this fuzzy RDD problem or this non-compliance problem.